welcome back to Ricketts Reef. I'm going to add one more DIY how-to on carbon dosing. So let's go into the sump room so I can pull out all the equipment for that and explain it. Well, here we are. This is the items you will need to successfully dose vodka into your system. Um, this is better known as carbon dosing. It doesn't exactly have to be vodka. You could also use vinegar. You could also use sugar. You could also use a bit of vitamin C. You can use a combination of all those things, which some people do, and there's threads you can find on that in the chemistry forum on Reef Central and uh, Three Reef and other good reef websites on the internet. Um, I've chosen to start with vodka, and I'll, I'll kind of explain where I'm going to head with my carbon dosing after I discuss this. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know everything about this chemistry because quite frankly I don't. You know, I'm just going to explain what I do know about it as fast as I can because YouTube only gives me 10 minutes. So in essence what happens is in your system there is the whole nitrogen cycle. Um, you start your system, you get some livestock in there, they start peeing, they're pooing, they're dying, they're creating waste, so then you get an ammonia spike. Bacteria comes along and eats your ammonia and secretes nitrites. Nit bacteria comes along and eat your nitrites and they secrete nitrates. Uh, it's the cycle, you know, ammonia and nitrites are very harmful to fish and corals and nitrates eventually will become harmful and poisonous. This is why you do water changes to remove the nitrates from your system. Um, in a reef aquarium, even with water changes, eventually your nitrates will continue to ra rise and rise and rise. <coughs> um, and that's why people have refugiums and they have macroalgae. The macroalgae essentially uses those nitrates to grow with light and then when you clip it, once it grows big enough, you clip it out and you throw it away or sell it to someone. Um, that's essentially removing the nitrates from your system. Now I did that with my nano and it worked well but I still got some green hair algae and I still got some um, cyanobacteria just a little bit but you know the green hair was starting to show up in spots so I didn't really think that that system was working very well and I had a system set up where it was essentially as efficient as I could possibly get it. Uh, another chemical that will build up in your system is phosphates and that builds up from your food uh, the fish food, the coral food, there's phosphates and stuff in there um, also if you don't fully clean your water with an RODI unit, there's phosphates in there. And phosphates can just seep into your system from the atmosphere as well. So what carbon does is carbon activates bacteria in your system and they essentially they grow and when they grow they use carbon, they use nitrates, and they use phosphates. And they grow to the size where your skimmer can pull them out of your system. This is why you need a good skimmer with this system. Um, if you don't have a good skimmer, it, it can do a lot of harm to your system. Uh, another thing that these bacteria use to grow is oxygen from your water. So if you don't have a skimmer that reoxygenates your water or another form, uh, air stones or something like that to push oxygen or ozone back into your tank, then you can get into a lot of troubles with this because basically your fish and your corals can suffocate in your tank because the bacteria is using your nitrates, your phosphates, and your oxygen to grow, and you're not taking them out of the system, so it just suffocates your your, your livestock. Uh, fortunately, and one reason why I got my my big old octopus skimmer there is because I knew I was going to go with some carbon dosing. Um, if you notice on the skimmer there, that I get some really black, thick uh, skimmate. And that's because I do carbon dosing, and the skimmer robs the system of that bacteria. It also reoxygenates the water. Um, it does a fairly good job at it too. I also have the power heads pointing towards the surface a bit in the display, so that uh, has a chemical exchange. And so far, the fish look pretty happy. Now, on the sidebar of YouTube here, I'm going to post some links to various forums where I have uh, discussed the carbon dosing in detail. Um, one thing with carbon dosing is that 
there's potential for problems. Um, with vodka, a lot of people report getting cyanobacteria, cyanobacteria, and some people get some other kinds of bacteria that aren't very good for their system. They're a pain in the butt. They don't get the allergies, but they get some weird bacteria growths. Um, so some people have discussed adding some other bacteria that compete with the cyano and the harmful bacteria or the annoying bacteria, uh, and that comes in the form of sometimes Microbacter 7, there's a ProBio product out there, there's a bunch of different products out there for adding uh, bacteria and cultures into your system that compete with the problematic ones. So what I did for my system is I started the on the instructions on the Microbacter 7, I just followed them for the first two weeks and did a pretty heavy dose. Eventually I went to a, a maintenance dose and then once that two weeks was up, I started using the instructions from the Reef Keeper magazine, which will be posted on the description, to dose the vodka. It's been about a month. When I started this, I had about, my nitrates were reading at about 10, my phosphates were reading at about 5. Now both of those are reading at 0. I'm at a maintenance dose of 1.3 milliliters a day. I'll probably even cut that down a little bit more to about one a day. Um, I've also gone through Reef Central and the Reef Keeping Magazine and pulled out information from people that do carbon dose on problems and how to solve those problems and you can find those in the forum links that I post on the side. Uh, right now in my system I've got a bit of a brown bacteria growth because I accidentally overdosed too much Microbacter 7. So, you know, cause and effect. I just stopped dosing Microbacter 7 for a few days and it'll go away. Fortunately I don't, and it has been going away. Fortunately I don't have any cyano yet and that seems to be the most problematic uh, thing with this dosing or the uh, white snowstorm. But you can read about that in the forums. Another thing you'll need when you're doing this is test kits. You'll need a good nitrate test kit and you'll need a good phosphate test kit. It's just you won't know how to dose properly unless you're testing for each week and seeing what your system needs because every system is different and every water volume is different. So that's carbon dosing in a nutshell. Um, I could not support a refugium right now if I wanted to because I have an ultra low nutrient system with the carbon dosing. Um, the skimmer is working well, it pulls out everything that I need it to pull out, so right now I have no need for that. And the only problem with this system is I can't really go away. <laughs> I got a dose every day and that blows. What if I want to go on vacation? So anyway, there's a new product out called uh, NP Bio Pellets and it kind of does the same thing as the vodka and the Microbacter 7, but more so the vodka. Um, I'm going to try out the bio pellets. They're coming in a few days from the internet, and I've made myself a little DIY reactor for them out of an old humidifier container. Uh, basically, it's just I'll put the bio pellets in there, I'll put on this little hose outlet thing here, and uh, as you can see in there, if you see the bio pellets, you take a look for them online. They're not big enough to fit through there. And then I've got, and that outlet from that hose goes right in front of the skimmer, so the bacteria that comes out and grows and uses the nitrates and phosphates goes right into the skimmer and gets skimmed out as much as possible. My power head pumps my water in through there. This hose just fits right in there because one hose is bigger than the other. And then the pellets will just swoosh around inside there, and I'll stick that in my sump basic simple reactor. I'll show it working when I get my pellets in a couple weeks, but that's basically carbon dosing uh, in a solid form where you don't have to sit there every day and choose different doses because the pellets just grow with the bacteria needed for your system to rob it of the nitrates and phosphates. Hopefully. <laughs> it's kind of a new product. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and if it doesn't work, I'll just go back to dosing vodka, vinegar, sugar, or a combination of all three. Anyway, I hope this answers a lot of questions and kind of shows how I'm able to grow some good SPS so far. And that's that. Okay, bye-bye.